Just outside the city of Los Angeles is an urban farm called Sarvadea. The name may be hard to pronounce, but its mission is easy to understand. The definition is taken as the upliftment of all, and I like that idea for the farm in that we're not just uplifting, uh, we're not just growing plants and, and growing healthy plants, but we're uplifting the soil, we're uplifting the ecosystem that we're, we're growing and the wildlife that we're living with and also the people that are coming here to learn and, and grow themselves. Rishi Kumar and his mother Manju weren't always urban farmers. It all started with a basic fear. We were really scared about our food. One day this is not good for you, the other day that's not good for you. It was just overwhelming and we thought we have the land, we can grow our own food, why don't we just grow it? So worried about pesticides, genetically modified seeds, and the basic waste of land, the Kumars started right in their own backyard, turning their typical suburban home into a sustainable teaching garden called the Growing Home. And they went from consuming to creating. Basically, you know, the, the suburban idea where you're just constantly consuming things and actually moving into, you know, let's grow some food here, we're going to grow some medicinal plants here. Instead of you getting all of our water from outside, we'll harvest the water that lands on our property, harvest the water that lands on our roof, recycle the gray water from our laundry machine, from our bathroom, from our shower, and turn it into a, a more balanced and productive place. It took four years to transform their property and launch their farm with the basic lessons of urban farming. Use your own seeds and care for the soil through composting, reusing thrown away food items to fertilize the soil. So what we do here is we, we care for the soil, we feed the soil, we make sure that there's moisture in the soil and when you do those things then the soil gives back to you, you know, as you are generous towards the soil and the soil is generous back to you and that's why on this small property we're able to grow so much food um, in such a small space. We have lettuce, we have chrysanthemum green. Untended soil green. is suppressed like according to Rishi. Of... To prove his theory he shows us his neighbor's yard. It's actually heavy and it has this, uh, this brown, kind of tan brown color his yard just a few feet away. So this is our garden and you can see here I can get my, sh my trowel in there nice and easy. It's loose all the way down and it has this much darker color and it crumbles really easily. Which helps the roots of plants grow deep and creates less need for irrigation. These basic ideas aren't new, they're thousands of years old and they could have a far-reaching impact in today's industrialized and urban world. In the United States alone, 30 to 40 percent of the food supply is wasted. That's more than 20 pounds of food for every person who lives in the U.S. every month. Nothing is wasted at the Kumar's farm. As a community-supported agricultural farm, people join the co-op and the farm feeds them. Every week on Wednesday, we go through and we harvest whatever is, is fresh and whatever is ready, and we pack it up into boxes and we send it out to our, our members. But beyond their reach in Los Angeles, the Kumar's have a message to share that could work anywhere. New Yorker Susan Kim is a trainee in the farm's free educational program. I've seen so many people interested in it. I really think this is a new wave of how we're going to make our food. We don't have to rely on people. We'll just um, use our front yards, use our backyards, use our terraces, and start growing our own food and seeing a big difference in our health and in our minds because it's all connected. Last year, this farm produced more than 10,000 pounds of fresh fruits and vegetables. That's thousands of meals. 
But obviously, not everyone has the time nor the space to replicate this. But that doesn't mean individuals can't take the Kumar's lessons to heart. What, what we do is we learn from the people that are really willing to go to these extreme measures to demonstrate the possible. And there are global possibilities. The Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations reports that 800 million people worldwide grow vegetables or fruits or raise animals in cities, producing what the World Watch Institute reports to be an astonishing 15 to 20 percent of the world's food. I think as we get more urbanized and concurrently need to look at environmental issues, it, it creates all these opportunities for innovation and creativity. So you might say, well, if the whole area is built out, where would we have a farm? So we could put on the roof, because what else is on the roof? Typically nothing. Rishi Kumar says the movement is growing because of the results. We can show, show people that you know, not only are we growing a lot of food, we're growing nutritionally dense food which is actually going to enliven you and invigorate you and keep your, keep your body healthy. And to prove that, this year, the farm's fresh veggies, fruits and eggs will be compared in a lab to the same items purchased at a grocery store. Useful research, but findings Kumar doesn't really need to know why he's an urban farmer. For Full Frame, this is Sandra Hughes in Pomona, California. Thank you.